Hello everyone, Nerlars Hands here, and today we're going to be taking a look at this P3 kilowatt meter. I have used this meter for a long time on a lot of my videos. I really like this meter, it works really well, but I recently broke it, and that's my fault, it's not the fault of the meter. I was testing an inverter generator that I had purchased. It is rated for 16.6, I think, amps output, and as it turns out, it can do a lot more than 16 amps. So I was putting 25 amps or so through this for quite some time, and then it stopped working. I probably should have expected that, but we're going to open it up and see if we can fix it. And these things are kind of interesting in a few ways when you open them up, so I thought this might interest some of you. Now, I do have another meter I could use. I have another P3 kilowatt hour meter, but this particular one here quit working. A component inside failed. Um, open it up and replace the component, but... Uh, I have this tape over it because my fix really wasn't safe, so I don't want to use this one. Could fix this one at some point too. I also have this and super meter. I bought this one because it is similar to the kilowatt EZ meters in that it has a battery backup inside. It also has a much nicer display. Overall, it's a really nice meter. I like this one too, but this one does not do power factor as well as these do. In fact, when I was running a 0.6 power factor load off of that generator, uh, something that's very non-linear. This read completely wrong, so it was pretty much useless. Otherwise, it works out pretty well, and it saves your power um, and history when you unplug it. So that's really nice. Uh, I also want to show you this quick. This is a 1920s light meter. And yes, it's a light meter because it was specifically designed for lighting loads only. But about uh, 15 or 20 years ago when I was in high school, I actually used this as my power meter because these little doodads didn't exist. Um, all you had was utility meters. So I used this and uh, counted how long it took for the little wheel inside to rotate around so I knew how many watts I was using. Kept track of kilowatt hours up here. And yeah, it still works great after 100 years being 100 years old. Uh, bought that off of eBay and just hooked a couple of cords up to it. But anyway, today we're gonna open this guy up and see if we can fix it. Because right now, if I plug it in, Nothing. No display at all. To open these guys up, it's pretty easy. On the back, there are three fasteners, and they happen to be number one Phillips. So, just grab your little Phillips screwdriver and unscrew them. A lot of times you get security screws and stuff and things like this. And some of the early models of this did have security screws. I think they were triangle head, uh, but these are not. So, I'm just going to take these out, and then we'll see what's inside. And I think the construction of these is, is kind of interesting. There's my three screws. Set these aside so I don't lose them. And we'll pull this apart. This is just a piece of plastic. There's nothing interesting there. And this is what's actually inside the thing. You can see that they have the outlet leads just directly soldered to this little circuit board in here. And I may not have to take this all the way apart to fix it. I imagine that all I have is a blown fuse. Probably this guy here, I don't know. But just to show you the construction, I am going to take it apart. I'm just going to take these out, and then we'll be able to see the rest of it. With all of those screws removed, I can just pull this out. And this is what it looks like. Again, we just have some plastic here. We have these buttons that are just held into the plastic through friction and the actual display. And this is what I find really interesting. Um, the buttons are going to fall out, so I'm just going to remove those. But the display is... Uh, let's see, it doesn't want to come out of this one, and I'm not going to force it. But on the display over here, there is actually no connection to the circuit board. It doesn't connect in any way, which is pretty cool. Because these little LCD displays, if I move my finger on the back, some of these segments might light up. Um, okay, they're not. But anyway, it takes very little energy to actually light up these segments. So they actually have this little conductive strip up here. If I get it in the light just right, you might be able to see it. That these gold contacts up on top uh, just lightly connect to. It's, it's pretty cool. It makes it really easy to assemble. And I haven't seen that before. They do have an ASIC on here, this uh, black blob. This is just some epoxy that they put over a bare IC. So obviously they make these in quantity. 
Usually you need uh, volumes of at least one million pieces to get something like this. So they actually put the bare IC onto the circuit board and wire bond it directly to the circuit board and then the epoxy around it. You'll see this in a lot of high volume applications. Uh, this sort of thing here is just an integrated circuit, an IC package. This you solder to the board. This has the IC and the wire bonds bonded to the package. This means you pay for the IC and you pay for the package. In this case, you don't have to pay for the package, so it's cheaper, and that's why they do it that way. But in any case, there isn't a whole lot in here. You have just some power components, a couple of logic circuits here, a buzzer for when it's overloaded, a little bit of power supply stuff in your oscillator to run your microcontroller or whatever it is, and then your power board, power in, power out. You have some sort of current sense resistor here so that you can monitor current and uh, a ribbon cable to connect your lines together so you can monitor phase and everything else. So at this point it just becomes figuring out what's wrong with it so I can fix it. And for that I'm going to get my multimeter. After getting out my multimeter I realized it said something incorrect. This resistor isn't actually a current sense resistor. It's probably for some sort of voltage sense on the phase. In any case this is your actual current sense resistor. It's just what looks to be a 10 gauge or 12 gauge wire soldered to the board. And that would be a calibrated resistance. Not quite sure how they get that accurate because I know that this meter is accurate to within a couple of percent using a far more expensive scientific piece of equipment. So they must somehow calibrate it through firmware in this I see up here. Um, in any case, I'm rather impressed with that. So there are two fuses I see on here. There is this one, and there is this one. And this looks to be a resettable thermal fuse. This one looks to be an ordinary fuse. And I can't quite read the rating on this one. I think it says 0 0.2 amps on there. Can't quite tell. So I'm not really sure what that's for. At the moment, I don't care. Let's just see if the fuse is good. and zero ohms. So that fuse is obviously good. I'm going to test this current sense resistor while I'm down here. 100 ohms. And is that correct with the resistor code? Brown, black, brown. Uh, let's see. It seems to be correct. So 100 ohms. That one is just fine. And then we have this fuse. It seems to be the thermal resettable fuse that failed. Now, I do not have replacement thermal resettable fuses. Hmm. So that's going to be our problem. This particular fuse is bad. So let me see what I have that can be used to repair this thing. A couple of notes of things that I find to be interesting. This particular fuse is a 15 amp fuse, 250 volt rated and 99 degrees Celsius. So that means that it should trip at 99 Celsius and reset when it gets cold. It's obviously not resetting. So this thing failed. Maybe it's because the overload was so severe that it heated up too quickly or maybe it's just cheap. Uh, I'm not quite sure. In any case, I was thinking if I remove this, is that going to mess up the calibration of this? Is the resistance of this included in the measurement? So if you look at the circuit board here, it comes, the power comes in through your outlet circuit here, and this lead here runs through a trace from that solder connection to here. It goes through the fuse, and then it runs through this resistor here. And from here to here, and then back. And here are your sense traces, this one and this one. They come right off of the through-hole vias that this wire is soldered into, and these are your actual sense lines that are being read for current. So whatever losses exist inside this thing is inconsequential to the operation of your actual meter. So for safety reasons, I should probably replace this with the fuse, but I think what I might actually do is just cut this part out and tie these two together. And then there's no fuse protection, but well, if it starts on fire, I guess I'll unplug it. I found a few different options for repairing this. I don't have a thermal resettable fuse like this one, but I do have automotive blade style fuses. 
and I could solder this in place of that, and it would fit inside the case just fine. This is a 20 amp fuse, which should still be safe for something like this. The reason that this is 15 amps is for UL ratings and such. This is a NEMA 15 amp outlet. The 20 amp ones have a blade that goes this way. Um, I don't have one here to show you at the moment, but that's a 20 amp outlet. This is a 15, so they can't legally put in something more than a 15 amp fuse. So I could put this one in. That would give me some more margin. But I don't really want to worry about a fuse blowing inside this thing again, so I don't think I'm going to do that. Another option I have would be to put in an automotive style circuit breaker. And I do have one here. This one happens to be 10 amps. I do have a 20 amp version. The trouble is, they're big and they don't fit. So what I'm going to do instead is something like this. and solder those two together. Uh, you might think that that's not safe, but I disagree, it is perfectly not safe. And uh, I'll just use it accordingly. So, I'm going to solder those together, put this back together, and then we'll see if it works. And that connection should be plenty good for this amount of current. So I don't have to worry about that overheating. All I have to really worry about overheating now is the circuit board itself. And I put a lot of current through this board. It shows no signs of warming up at all, nor did the actual unit get warm at all. And these P3 units are very well made, so I'm really not too concerned about it. Um, because it's for my own use, and I'm not going to resell this or give it to someone else. I think it's best for me to not have a fuse in there, so I'm just going to use it like this. But let's put this thing back together. And there we go. We should have one working P3 kilowatt meter. These things are well made, so I hate throwing them out. It only took me 10 minutes or so to fix it and make this video. Uh, take a lot longer to edit it and upload it and everything else. But let's actually test this thing out and make sure it's really fixed, because I may not have fixed it. Okay, let's test out a repair. Here's the meter that didn't work before. Let's see if it works now. No magic smoke. That's a good thing. Now I do have this and super meter. I don't like this one as much. I don't think it's quite as accurate for different, excuse me, for different power factors and such. But uh, under ordinary uh, 1.0 power factor loads, it does work quite well. Um, so we're just going to compare the two. 123.2 volts, they both say. I have an electric heater here. It's just a standard 1500 watt electric heater. We're going to plug this guy in, see what they say. I just turned it on high right from the start. Let the heater warm up completely, it takes a little bit. And we're looking at uh, 1340 watts, 11.5 amps. So let's compare. It's 
very close. So this meter is repaired. Nothing I did inside should change its accuracy whatsoever or its uh, ability to monitor, po monitor power factor or anything like that. My uh, favorite little meter here is now repaired and in good working order. So I thought it might be interesting to show what's actually inside these doodads. Uh, there's not a whole lot in there, but it's kind of interesting, I think, how they connect the display and whatnot. And all these buttons seem to work just fine yet. So, this is Nurlnar, and thanks for watching. This video wouldn't be complete without a demonstration of how this thing works. I don't actually use this thing anymore very much. I have used it on occasion to monitor my sump pump. Um, because it almost never runs, so I just plug this into it, and if it ever runs, I'll know if it did. But in any case, I haven't used this thing in years. Plug it in, you can see the little wheelie dial inside. I'll zoom in on that when it's actually turning. Um, you can read the kilowatt hours here, they actually turn opposite directions. This one turns this way, this one turns this way, etc. Just like a, a meter like this. Almost all of them are digital now, but a lot of you probably remember the analog ones. So then you plug your load into this cord and turn it on. And there you go. It runs through and uh, if I zoom in on this, you can probably see the wheel turn around. I'll turn just the fan on just to slow the wheel down. Then you can see it turn slowly. And if you count how many times this wheel goes around in one minute, you know how many watts you're drawing. And this is what I used to use before there were better things out there commonly available for cheap. But uh, this was one way that a poor high school kid could uh, play around with stuff. Figured how much uh, electricity things were using and whatnot. I monitored all of my parents' appliances. Found out that their freezer took 180 kilowatt hours a month, so they bought a new freezer. Um, <laughs> In any case, just wanted to uh, show you this little thing, and you can still find these pretty cheap. Um, this is probably an antique at this point, and maybe it sells for more now, I don't know, but it is still useful for its original purpose, monitoring electricity. It's from the SC Edison company, it says up there on top. Anyway, this is Nurlnar, and thanks for watching.